everyone, my name is Amanda Schreier. I am the volunteer coordinator with the Biddeford Cultural and Heritage Center, and we are so excited that you are joining us today for BCHC Presents Cultural Cuisines. On the menu today is a Dublin Coddle, and we have prepared some ingredients beforehand to make this easier. about three russet potatoes. Now you can do it as a rustic chop. It doesn't have to be fine diced, just whatever's easiest. We also have fried a package of applewood, thick cut bacon. And then we have some fried in the baking grease pork sausage that we then let cool and chop. And you only have to par fry it. You don't have to cook it the whole way. It will finish in the stew. And then we have some rustic chopped onions that we are going to cook up in the remaining bacon and sausage grease, which we will go ahead and do now. And as always, before you start cooking, you want to make sure that your ingredients and your hands are washed. And if you do have access to a compost system, you want to make sure to save the ends of anything that can be composted. Meat is not one of them, but potatoes and onions you can add it to it. And while we have this going ahead and sauteing or frying, we also have a pot on the stove where we're going to put all of our ingredients. And inside of it is three cups of water and three chicken bouillon cubes. You can also just use chicken broth, beef broth, vegetable broth, whatever works best for you. So we're going to let that cook for a little bit just to soften up and get translucent. So Amanda, I had a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. Um, first of all is, what, why did you pick this dish in particular? So I picked a Dublin Coddle to cook for you all because it's an easy meal. It's one that's perfect with everything that you have going on in your day, homeschooling, working. It's a great Sunday meal or a weeknight meal. It can be cooked multiple different ways. You can make it in a instant pot, a slow cooker, the stovetop, or the oven. It is preferred to be on the stovetop, so it can simmer and cook low and slow throughout the day. Do you know anything about the history of the dish itself? I do. So the Dublin Coddle dates back, it's believed, to the Irish famine times. And this was a meal that you would use whatever bits and pieces you had left, which during the famine were very scarce, and you would throw it all in the pot and it would still provide you the nutrition from the potatoes, any kind of meat scraps. It didn't always have to be pork. It could be whatever was on hand. Interesting. Do you know how they named it? Why they named it coddle? Yep, so they named it coddle because that is another word for stew or casserole. And it was really popular as a method for wives to feed their husbands when they would be gone at work or go to the pub. So during the day, they would prepare it, let it cook all day, and then go to bed. And by the time their husbands would come home, it would be all ready for them to have a nice hot meal to go with a piece of bread and maybe some more Guinness. <laughs> and um, do you yourself have any Irish roots? I do. They date back um, quite a ways, I believe 1700s. I can't find the exact name, but I do have family that came from Galway. Mm -hmm. Well, I did see that there was a Thomas Strayer who arrived in Albany, Albany during the Irish Famine in 1849. Any relation? Could be. <laughs> the, the Strayer is actually a German, um, I believe it's German name, it's my father's surname, and it could very well be that I, I'm sure we're all related in one way or another. And I believe they came down during the Irish Famine as a result of it from what you had mentioned to me. 
So the onions are doing well. You want to just keep an eye out, especially if you're using a gas stove, um, because with the bacon grease and the sausage grease, you don't want to create any fires. So you want to always make sure that your hair is put back. And if you have long sleeves like I do today, you want to pay close attention to those and always have a fire extinguisher handy. And those are looking really good. So we're just going to let them go a little bit longer to get a little softer and more translucent. to go ahead and add in our onions that were sauteed in the bacon and sausage grease. And you always want to be careful with a cast iron because they are heavy and they are still hot. So we're just going to dump that all in there with the scrappings from the sausage and the bacon. You don't want to get too much of the grease in there, but a little bit Ideally, you can let this cook on the stovetop all day, but at minimum, you want to do about two to three hours or until the potatoes are nice and tender if you went ahead and did like we did and cooked all the meats ahead of time. And we will be back when that's ready to show.
Welcome back to BCHC Presents Cultural Cuisine. Our Dublin Coddle is now all ready to serve. So we are going to put it in a bowl. Now what is it traditionally, if, do you know what they traditionally eat it with? So traditionally you would eat it with bread so that you can dunk it. And this is another meal that is great um, as leftovers the next day or the day after. Traditionally, it would be made on a Thursday with all the scrappings of the meat that they had from the week because on the Friday, due to being Catholic, they couldn't eat meat on Fridays. So Amanda, can you tell us a little more about how you became so interested in cooking? I became interested in cooking thanks in part to my mother. She is a big big cooker and yes, we always would eat dinner um, at the table together as a family so it's just a great thing to do with kids or loved ones and learn more about your heritage and culture and those that came before you. Mm, interesting and I noticed you were playing some Irish music a little while ago. <laughs> I was. One of my favorite songs although not necessarily a traditional Irish song um, is by Bing Crosby. It's the Irish lullaby, and it's my favorite because growing up, my mom would always sing it to me whenever I was sick or tired. And even to this day, although I'm in my 30s, it's still a song that brings a lot of comfort. And um, so did you want to talk a little bit about if somebody had questions or recipes? Or... Yes, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email them to bchc. 0405 at gmail.com. And if you have um, any recipes that you would like us to try out, go ahead and send it to the same email address, bchc04005 at gmail.com. And in the subject, just put cultural cuisine. Thank you so much for joining us today and be sure to check out our social media for more ways on how you can help. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you.